I just ran my very first marathon ever 10 days ago, the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon 2024. And the thing that I love about running is that I view it as a metaphor for life. It's taught me so many different things. And obviously, there are the physical benefits to it. There's so many out there. But the mental aspect of this game is what I appreciate the most. It reminds me of this Seneca quote, we treat the body rigorously so that it remains obedient to the mind. That's what running is for me. And I think that in the 16 weeks leading up to this marathon race, my very first marathon ever, I've learned more about myself and life than in any other period of my life. So today I'd like to share three takeaways from these 16 weeks on how to build confidence, how to eliminate nerves, and how to ensure that you can deliver the results that you desire. Confidence stems from evidence. Arrogance stems from insecurity. Cockiness stems from unawareness. When I was asked about my goals and I told people, my loved ones, that I wanted to go sub three in my very first marathon ever, I was told that I was being unrealistic and somewhat cocky, uh, that I lacked the experience and that I wasn't really capable of it. And I was advised to be humble going into it, which honestly makes a lot of sense to be very clear. I have absolutely no problem with those comments because I understand where they're coming from. And I think as Blaise Pascal once said, to understand is to forgive, which to me means more of you can't hate that which you understand. And honestly, like I I understood that these comments stemmed from love and support from people that wanted to protect me and honestly just didn't want to see me fail. I had this big goal. I was aspiring towards it, but maybe it was a bit too ambitious. Maybe I would be disappointed and just running a marathon is an accomplishment in and of itself. So maybe it was added pressure. Maybe that's what it was. So I understood where these comments were coming from, but I also understood that these people that are loved ones of mine don't know how much work and preparation went into this. They don't know about the 4 a.m. alarms. They don't know about the strictly calculated diet. They don't know about my double days, six days per week. They don't know that I eliminated anything that could serve as a distraction to my goals. And I understood that they don't know what I know. And quite honestly, because I understood this, I wasn't bothered by these comments. I wasn't offended or insulted by it, but rather I stayed focused on what I wanted to do, what I was focused on accomplishing. And I was confident enough to know that they were wrong and I was right because I had enough proof to back myself up. It's just like that Alex Ramosi quote, you don't become confident by shouting affirmations in the mirror but by having a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are. Outwork your self-doubt. And in these 16 weeks leading up to the marathon, I ran six days a week, every single week, for a total of 823.2 miles, not missing a single day, and covering these 823.2 miles served as my stack of undeniable proof. By then, I knew exactly who I was. Now, I just had to go out there and reveal it to the world. And to me, this is an important life lesson because sure, some people will criticize. Some people will give comments out of hatred or jealousy or whatever you want to call it. But in this case, that, that, that just was not the case. But I managed to learn from this that I don't necessarily have to listen, whether they're coming from love or from hate or from jealousy, whatever it may be. If you do enough work, if you stack enough evidence, if you stack enough proof to know that you can do what you prepared for, to know who you are, none of this will matter. The only way to find out the truth is by stacking up this evidence, by stacking up this proof. In this case, for me, it was in the miles. But whatever you're doing, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're an athlete, a student, whatever you may be, a parent, The only way to be unbothered by these comments is by knowing exactly who you are. And you do this by building confidence, by stacking up the bricks one day after another, after another, after another, for a long enough period of time that by the end, you know exactly who you are and nothing that anybody can say will change that fact. By the time my alarm went off on race day, I learned a very important life lesson. Preparation eliminates nerves. There are really only three things you must do in order to achieve any goal 
in the best way possible. You got to set a goal, you got to reverse engineer your plan, and you got to commit to never skipping a single day. Obviously, you have to set your goals in the smartest way possible. That is smart, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-based. And you have to commit to being consistent through discipline. But honestly, that's just the basics. Like if you're not already doing that, focus on doing that. Whatever goal you want to achieve in life, focus on doing that first. For those of you that are already doing that, I think the biggest competitive advantage that I found in this 16 week long process is to reverse engineer your plan. And honestly, the idea is very simple. You must think forward, but plan backwards. And that's all just a nice fancy way of saying that you should begin with the end in mind. And to quote Stephen Covey on this, to begin with the end in mind means to start with a clear understanding of your destination. It means to know where you're going so that you better understand where you are now so that the steps you take are always in the right direction. So by doing this, by thinking, all right, my very first marathon, I want to go sub three, I started to come up with proper routines and a training plan to ensure success come race day, to ensure that I would achieve my goal. So I had to come up with the best plan and the best routines so that it would become a habit. And by the time I got to race day, it just felt like any other day. And obviously the training plan is extremely important. I was running six days a week and lifting six days a week. And I was rotating my runs with my tempo runs and my interval runs and my long runs. And I was lifting on a push, pull, leg split and all these different types of things. But I think that my biggest competitive advantage towards myself to achieve this goal, this ambitious goal that I set out to myself was in paying attention to the details in my routines, I think that made the biggest difference. And I think that is the main difference between a good and a great race to paying attention to the tiniest of details in your routines leading up to any run every single day. So the way that I managed to do this is that the night before I laid out the gear that I would be wearing on the next morning's run, as well as my coffee, my warm up equipment and my pre run fueling. And I did this every single time and I got my warm up, my bowel movement and my fueling routine down to the literal minute. And one month out of the race, I even adjusted my schedule to do my long runs on Sundays and I would even start to wake up at 3 a.m. on those Sundays and make sure to start my run at 6.15 a.m. on the dot. Why did I do this? Because come race day, I knew that I needed to be waking up at 3 a.m. for that race, and I knew that the race time was 6.15 a.m. So what better way to practice for this race than going through the exact same process one month out from the race that I would be doing come race day? I was so prepared, and it honestly just felt like second nature to me at that point when race day showed up. It felt like any other Sunday, because for the past three Sundays, I had done the exact same thing and the exact same routine and nothing felt different. Absolutely nothing. Like I said, it all just felt like another Sunday to me. I knew exactly what I had to do and it felt like true second nature to me. There was nothing more I could have done. I controlled my controllables so much that no uncontrollables could get in my way of achieving my goal. It was just another Sunday. Preparation then eliminates nerves. By the time I showed up to the race and I was at the start line, I felt completely calm and confident, not in myself, but in the evidence that I had stacked up leading up to this race. But there was one thought that creeped into my mind. Effort is irrelevant if you can't deliver the desired outcomes. It's a brutally harsh truth of life that I've learned to accept. No one cares about how hard you worked if you can't deliver the results. There will be people that work much less than you, but achieve greater things than you do just through their inherent talent or genetics, as well as privilege and everything else that comes along with it. Life is not fair. You can cry and complain about it, or you can accept it and keep moving forward. The choice is yours, but just know that the decision you make will determine the direction in which your life is headed. By the time you learn to accept this, you'll realize that all you can do is be so good that they can't ignore you. So good that success becomes inevitable. And how do you do this? By planning backwards, by having your goal in mind from the very 
very start. You plan for this, you work for this, and then you stack up all these different bricks. You build this house, you have this evidence that you show up at the actual race, and all you have to do is deliver. All you have to do is reveal it to the world. By that time, I wasn't even thinking about my time because I knew I would accomplish it. As soon as I ran my first two miles, I knew that that was a day. I knew that I would be fine. But the only reason that happened is because I stacked up the bricks over and over and over again. All results are a lagging indicator of decisions made long before. Completing my first marathon ever in 247.04 is a lagging indicator of the 823.2 miles of work I put in throughout the 16 weeks leading up to the race. Placing 4th in my age group and 16th overall is a lagging indicator of me not skipping a single run in the past 10 months. And obviously, as soon as I posted about this on my Instagram or on social media, the DMs started coming in. You're insane. You're crazy. Please reveal your secrets on how to be faster. And that's when I learned how right Michelangelo was in saying, if you knew how much work went into it, you wouldn't call it genius. You wouldn't call it genius if you were there with me at 4 a.m. when my alarm went off and I was tired, but I did it anyways. You wouldn't call it genius if on a Friday night when my friends were asking me to go out to the bar or whatever it was, I was already in bed going to sleep for the long run on Saturday morning. You wouldn't call it genius. You wouldn't call it talent. You wouldn't call me crazy if you saw me waking up at 3 a.m. on Sunday to prep for race day a month out. Because the output was simply a reflection of all the input. Running simply serves as the vehicle to the physical side of the infinite game that I choose to play. Personal growth and personal development. That's why at mile 24, I was already creating a mental list of everything I could improve on for my next training block, for my next goal, for my next race. As well as why as soon as I crossed the finish line and I saw the number 247.04, my first thought, my true reaction was shoot so close to sub 245 and i think that's the hack to self-development and personal growth it's what i like to call the happiness circle when the process becomes the reward i don't run for races nor the compliments nor external validation i run to continuously push myself both mentally and physically to continue learning more about myself and life by pushing myself and my limits on a daily basis. It's my morning meditation and my first win of the day. My reminder that I can do hard things. And that's exactly why I'm already thinking about the next one, the next goal, and the next race. And by no means am I perfect. Allow me to remind you what I said at the very beginning of this episode. This sport to me serves as a metaphor for life, meaning that all these different lessons from life that I learned in the past 16 weeks I can now apply to all the other areas of my life. I applied it now in my athletics and my athletic performance. Great. Now I can apply it to my social life, to my academic life, to my work, to my content creation, to my podcast, all these different things, all these lessons I can apply to the other areas of my life. And so can you, regardless of what you're doing. But the only way to learn these things is by doing them. You can only read so much about them. And trust me, I've read so much about them. I've listened to the podcast. I've watched the videos. I've read the books. But I learned more about life and about myself and about what I'm capable of in 16 weeks of running than in any other time of my life. And now all I can do is start applying these lessons to the other areas of my life. Starting with this podcast, by the way, I have to be more consistent I have to work harder at this. I have to be more disciplined. And at first, it's going to be hard. This is my first week back and it's hard. Posting twice a week, it is difficult. But once you get past that initial phase, it all starts becoming habitual. And eventually, you start stacking the bricks over and over and over again. And eventually, you build a house. And once you see that house, once you see that proof, once you see that evidence then you're confident, not confident in yourself, confident in the evidence that your work has produced. Because by being confident in yourself by then, eh, that could be an issue because you could think that you were right and everybody else was wrong. But at no point was it you. At no point was it your talent. At no point was it your abilities or your capabilities. It was always in the work. That's what I took away from these past 16 weeks 
That is what I will try to apply to this podcast and to every other area of my life. And I will keep you guys posted as I continue running. And one last thing right before I let you guys go, if you've made it this deep into the episode and you don't already follow me on Instagram, I would encourage you to do so. You can find that in the description below. But the reason I'm saying this is because every single morning and every single evening, I'm posting a picture of my watch and it's after every run and after every lift, I'm posting my stats and calories and whatever distance right there, my pace right there. And you can find that because I, like I said, I was getting those DMs of how did you do this? You're insane. You're crazy. And to me, it's that Michelangelo quote, right? If people saw the work that I did, they wouldn't consider it crazy or insane or genius or great. And that's my goal to keep on posting it every single day. So by the time I hit my next goal, my next race, people understand why. And most importantly, people understand that they can do it too. And by the way, that's who I was before I was this 247 marathon guy. 10 months ago, I was struggling to run five kilometers. I couldn't do it. But every single morning, I would wake up and I would see Nick Bear's story or Casey Neistat's story. And I would see the miles that they were putting up and I would see their paces and I would see them stacking the bricks every single day. And on the days that it was hard, on the days that I didn't want to, on the days that I wasn't feeling like it, that motivated me so much. It held me accountable and it kept me going. It kept me moving forward. And to me, obviously, I don't have their platforms, but if I could be that person for somebody else, then that's why I'm posting it on my story. That's why I'm going to post a picture of my watch after every single run, after every single lift, six days a week. You can find it there on my stories. That's the only reason I'm posting it. And hopefully it helps somebody just like it did for me. But that is it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. This is my very first monologue in a very long time. And it's honestly me taking a step outside my comfort zone, but I'm going to try and do this on a weekly basis moving forward. Same thing as the episodes. You can expect those two episodes per week, one with a guest and one by myself here in a monologue section. So for now, if you aren't subscribed to YouTube, if you aren't subscribed to Spotify, please, please, please do that. It helps this channel a lot. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.